and they finished uh, pretty well. The Husqvarna was a relatively new motorcycle in the U.S. It was imported by a fellow named Edison Dye from San Diego, and Malcolm was one of the first dealers. Of course, we all had to get Huskies because uh, Malcolm was our pal, and he sold them, and they seemed like the uh, secret weapon. But through Edison and the Husqvarna, that was really the start of uh, sort of modern motocross in the United States. We put a helmet camera on Reed Price and sent him out trying to chase JN down. Reed was the guy that had the 90cc Yamaha and when I got my 200cc Triumph Cub, told me I was going to get killed in that big thing. A couple years later, he was the number one desert plate holder. Conrad talking about riding in the sand. Well, the secret to sand is speed. You can't beat speed because you get up on top of the sand and then you're just like riding on pavement once you get on top. And if you don't have the speed, then you're in trouble. When you get toward the end and you get a bottleneck or a deep sand wash, you're getting pretty darn tired makes it even harder to get out of the place. Almost every desert race had some killer uphill and killer downhill to uh, sort of spice it up. Some of the downhills you'd look over the edge and go, wow, I don't know if I really want to go down there. Here again, Gary Conrad. Well, just uh, keep the bike upright and get through it. Uh, you might be going slower than the other guys, but if you can get up through it and stay upright without uh, losing your balance, and you'll come out a lot better. Guy's got a two-piece handlebar. I had a real special relationship with Wide World of Sports. I would uh, shoot the film independently, and they had the right to broadcast it once, and then I would retain all the other rights to the film. So it worked out perfect for me, because I could sort of do it independently the way I wanted, and they could broadcast it, and then I could uh, keep all the other rights to the film. While Jan's got a big lead, these guys battling out back in the pack for who knows what place, but they still are need water, they're tired, but they want to get to the finish. And Jan Roberts at the finish. There's hardly any spectators in desert racing. Almost everybody there is just another rider or pit crew or your friend. Jan across the line and Brennan McClellan was right there. Beautiful, Robbie, beautiful. Breathe. Tell me how that is. Wait a minute, wait a minute. I gotta do it. That's <laughs> it. Do good, Gary Preston in second place. And Larry Burquist in third place on his BSA. And fourth overall and first 250 lightweight was Bill Fryer. Jenna McClellan with JN. Beautiful race. JN, how did it go? Riding a 360 Husqvarna. Well, it was pretty rough the whole course. I mean, uh, you know. What gave you the most particular trouble? All the real soft sand and the tight washes back there. Pretty much low gear. 
I notice you've got shoulder pads and shin guards on, and some of the boys I've talked to say they really help. Yeah, well, I broke my collarbone a few thousand times, so I wear them now, you know, to keep from uh, breaking them again if possible. Congratulations. Great win. Nice going. The neat thing about a desert race, when you finish, even though you're bruised and you've got blisters and tired and dehydrated, you really sort of had a sense of accomplishment that you, you made the thing. It takes a while to collect all the bikes, if you can find them, because there was about 600 of them out there. The next number one desert plate holder, but he needs to wear some elbow guards. That's my youngest son, Wade, who did the music for this piece, and uh, my wife with my daughter Nancy in the oven. That's my uh, oldest son Dana standing beside that uh, blue car. He's also a filmmaker now, having done surf film Step in the Liquid and uh, covered the bomb 1000 with a feature film called Dust to Glory.